Now that we've had an opportunity to look at some familiar polymers that are produced using step growth polymerization, let's go a little bit deeper and see if we can get some insights into the nature of the molecular weight distributions and chain length distributions that uh, are achievable using this polymerization mechanism. Uh, the first step to doing that uh, is to quantify how these monomer units can react uh, with each other. And functionality uh, is a parameter that describes the number of molecules that are capable of linking with a given monomer. So the cases that I've shown you previously uh, are examples of bifunctional monomers, meaning they contain two functional groups, uh, one at each end, like is shown with these red uh, dots uh, at each end of these uh, monomer units. So bifunctional monomers, as you can see, are, are able to join end to end, uh, and so they produce linear polymer chains plus uh, some condensation or addition uh, products uh, that might be associated with uh, the specific reaction uh, that occurs between uh, these monomer units. Now, you could imagine that we could have more than two functional groups per monomer unit. Uh, if we have trifunctional or higher uh, degrees of functionality, these types of uh, reactions then will generate polymers that have a branched or network architecture. Uh, and you can see that uh, in this example I've shown here. This is an example of a trifunctional uh, monomer unit. So there's three active sites. Those can join together end to end uh, in the same way that uh, we considered before for the bifunctional case. But the presence of the side group means that uh, chains can also join uh, along the side group. So this can form junctions or linkages uh, between growing chains uh, to generate a network structure. And you can imagine that the relative reactivity of these active sites uh, will play a role in determining the properties uh, of the polymer that's produced. Uh, if, for example, the side group has a lower reactivity, then uh, there's more likely to be a reaction end to end. So you have primarily linear uh, polymers with a, a light degree of cross-linking or branching between them. Whereas if they have equal reactivities or even if the, you know, there's other uh, variations on the reactivities, uh, those will produce uh, different uh, properties in the network structure, more densely cross-linked structure, uh, and that will also affect the mechanical properties uh, of the material. And of course, these are properties that are tuned by the chemistry, uh, the chemical nature of the monomer units, the stoichiometry, and the reaction conditions. Those all come into play. Uh, to tune uh, the properties of the material that's produced. Okay, now let's take a closer look at how we can determine the degree of polymerization for a step growth process. First, we're going to define a parameter called the extent of reaction, abbreviated by the lowercase p. So this parameter expresses the probability that a functional group has reacted. So let's consider a simple case where we're assuming bifunctional monomers, uh, so the functional groups have equal reactivity, uh, and there's perfect stoichiometry, meaning we have the same number of moles uh, of each of the monomer units, uh, and they're all equally likely to react with each other. So this is a recipe for linear polymers, uh, as we've shown uh, already. So with this in mind, then we can define uh, a number average degree of polymerization at some time t by counting the initial number of functional groups present in the sample divided by the number of unreacted functional groups that are still remaining at time t. And so notice that if we're counting functional groups, we're actually counting molecules. So initially, the sample contains only monomer units. So the initial number of functional groups is going to be two times the number of monomers, because remember, we're considering bifunctional monomers so each monomer contains two functional groups. At some time t, the number of unreacted functional groups is going to be equal to twice the number of molecules present, because now we not only have monomers present, but we also have polymers present. But even the growing chains have two functional groups, one on each end of the chain. So in this way, we can relate the number of unreacted functional groups to this extent of reaction as follows. We can express this as the initial number of functional groups times the probability that the functional group has not yet experienced a reaction. And this is equal to 1 minus p. Because notice that p is the probability that a functional group has reacted. So 1 minus p 
is the probability that a functional group has not yet experienced a reaction. We can substitute this in uh, and cancel out the initial number of functional groups that are present in the sample, and we end up with this relationship that the number average degree of polymerization is equal to 1 over 1 minus p. This is a very important result. Uh, this is known as the Carruthers equation, uh, named after our friend Wallace Carruthers, who you may remember uh, was uh, played a key role in the discovery of nylon, uh, and as part of that effort, also developed uh, a lot of this understanding of uh, condensation uh, polymerization associated with that.